What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Enscape new features tutorial for you. So you might have seen yesterday the newest version of Enscape, version 2.7, released yesterday. So I want to do a quick video talking through some of the new features and other things contained inside of this version. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So there's a post on Enscape's website um, talking through all the different features on Enscape 2.7, which I will link to in the notes down below. So if you want to read this blog post, you can get that by uh, visiting this website. One of the cool things about this new release is they've added the ability to create orthographic views inside of Enscape. And so what that allows us to do is that allows us to create floor plans and different cross sections of images um, inside of your renderings. So we're going to use this example model, which I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. So this particular model is the Villa Simple by SC Kristoff. So you can search for that and download that if you want to follow along in this model. But the way this new version of Enscape works is if you look at this model, we can click on this button right here to start our Enscape rendering. And so when that pops up, what there is now is they've added the ability to render orthographic views inside of Enscape. So when this first pops up, you get a rendering view that looks something like this. And this is pretty much the way that we've done these rendering views in the past, so no real big change there. But what you're going to notice is you've got this option in the upper right hand corner. You can see how when you mouse over this, this gives you the option for perspective. But if you click on it, it gives you options for perspective, two point, and orthographic. And I want to focus specifically on the orthographic in this video. But basically the way that this works is now we can put this into orthographic view, meaning this no longer has perspective associated with it, but instead the lines kind of run parallel instead of going to a vanishing point. Well, what this is really good for is this is really good for creating top views and straight on views. Um, so straight on views meaning like elevations and things like that. But you're going to notice when you go into this new orthographic view, there's this uh, menu for standard views. And so for example, let's say I was to tap the two on my number pad. Well, now what this does is this takes us into a front orthographic view like this one that gives us an elevation without us having to go through and make any changes. So this can now create these great um, straight on views like elevation views and other things like that. And you can see how these render out really nice. And one of the cool things that I like to do with this, and I'm going to minimize out of this for a second. One of the things I like to do with this is I like to add a little bit of outline. And so if I add a little bit of outline in here, you can see how now I get some edges um, along the things that make up lines inside of this rendering. So it gives us this cool kind of like line view rendering in here. And then the other thing you can do is you can also couple this with um, you can couple this with a section plane. So right now, for example, if I look at this from the top down, I get a view of the roof. However, if I was to go into SketchUp and I've got a section plane in here, so I'm going to unhide my section plane. But if I make this an active cut, and I'm going to go ahead and turn my trees off for right now, you can see if I look at this inside of Enscape, now what I get is I get this cool top down like floor plan view. Um, in orthographic mode. And you can adjust the shadows in your model so you can see how as I do this my shadows change. But you can also, if you want to go into your SketchUp settings, you can also turn your sun brightness down. If you turn your sun brightness down and then look at this, you can see how you've got a rendering in here without all of the different shadows. So unlike before where we had different shadows inside of here, now we can get a rendering of this without the shadows being cast through the windows. So you can mess around with your settings in order to do that. This is a really cool way to create rendered floor plan views inside of Enscape. So BIM mode is a new mode that they've added inside of Enscape um, where you can actually access different kinds of data about different things. Now I will note on this one, and you can click on these little buttons right here to get more information about these nodes or these modes. But at the moment, this is only available in Revit and ARCHICAD, so I can't really demonstrate it. Um, in SketchUp, if you go into BIM mode, you can click on objects. So like for example, if I look at my house, 
and I click on an object, you can select them after tapping B to go into BIM mode, but it currently doesn't pull any information from your SketchUp model. Well, in the Revit and ARCHICAD versions, um, this will pull down different information that's contained inside of your Revit model. And I do know that Revit models contain a lot more information. So you can kind of see in here, for example, that it's got um, the different object information lifted up, listed off to the left-hand side. So for those of you using Revit and ARCHICAD, there's now the ability to pull some information out of your rendering directly just by clicking on them. And I'm wondering, I'm not 100% sure, but if you were to export this as a standalone file, if you can click on this information or not, I assume that you can. But again, I haven't had the ability to test that because I don't run the Revit version. So in addition, they've also added a bunch of new assets, including lamps, as well as surrounding buildings. So now inside of SketchUp or inside of um, Enscape's asset library, you have a number of different lights and lamps that you can use inside of your models. So um, having fixtures like these, especially the ones that come in as proxies, is really helpful. So you can see how these bring, just like any of the other assets inside of uh, Enscape, these come in as proxies, and then they load with full detail inside of uh, Enscape itself. So in addition, if you go in under street props, um, you can find these new apartment building models that you can bring in. You can see how those also come in as the proxies, but these are really good for creating uh, all sorts of context behind uh, all sorts of context behind your models and in the background and that kind of thing. Notice that they come in and they have like um, they have glass on all the different faces and they're actually fairly well detailed so if you need to add buildings in the background all of these buildings can help you do that really quickly so notice that those have also been added to the asset library and then in addition and this doesn't really affect me but for those of you that speak German there's now a German version of Enscape that you can select by adjusting your language settings and the general settings and preferences and then there's a couple other items in here as well I haven't gotten too far into them so I haven't had a chance to test them but you've got the ability to not, now to do batch rendering meaning you can take all of the views inside of a model and render them at once so in addition they've also improved the clouds and atmospheric effects including the fog um, they've improved the area lights as well as shading of uh, things like curtains so partially transparent objects I haven't had a chance to test to any of these yet, but I am excited to go in and mess around with them a little bit. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you excited about the new features in here? What other features would you like to see in future versions of Enscape? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.